you, you picked a good audience. The Trekkies out there are numerous. Are they? Yes, they oh. are. They're still, <laughs> they are still hidden, but yes, there are true Trekkies out there. If the Trek audience demands more Trek content, I will swing this entire program that direction. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Absolutely. Welcome to Northeast Kansas at Home. My name is John Robison. I'll be your host today. It's April 5th, which is a special day in the world of science fiction. It's First Contact Day. That is the supposed day in the future when aliens land on Earth in the Star Trek universe. So we're going to talk to five Star Trek experts today and hear about their experiences at conventions, watching the show, and we're going to throw a little trivia their way at the end of the show also. I love it when pop culture affects people's lives in such a positive way and they're able to experience it out in the real world with other people that love it. And that's what we'll be talking about today. Enjoy the show! Hey, it's Sean Franklin. Hey, Sean. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Good! I'm so glad you're here with us today. Yeah, well, thank you. So you're, uh, you're a Star Trek fan. I, uh, yeah, I have been for a very long time. Yeah. For some reason, constantly being on in the background on our little black and white TV that sat on the floor back in the 70s. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was uh, that and Lost in Space were kind of uh, always seemed to be on opposite each other uh, in my mind, in my past. Joining us today is Pete Barrett. Pete is a Star Trek expert from way back and also a friend of mine. Pete, welcome to the show. Great to be here, John. Great to be here. Any time to talk that I get a chance to talk about Star Trek, you can count me in. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your history with Star Trek. Well, I uh, discovered it when one of my neighbors, um, uh, and I'm of the certain age where I saw it in original run. Uh, one of my neighbors came to me, one of my friends, and said, uh, there's a show on you need to check out. And um, so I went and saw um i went and watched on tv you know he had to wait for it to come on and i think it was on thursdays at that time um and i think i saw dagger of the mind which is a not a particularly great episode um but i was enthralled even in that weakened state that that presentation was and the next thing i know i was watching it religiously every every thursday um and um got pulled in never left this is kaylin stockton kaylin Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. <laughs> sure. So tell us, um, what do you like about Star Trek? Well, I grew up watching The Next Generation. Mm -hmm. My dad was an OG Star Trek fan. He grew up in the 70s. He grew up watching, um, you know, syndicated original series reruns. And when New Generation came on, he was in, he had just graduated high school. So he mm -hmm. just started college and he was very skeptical. But it grew on him because Next Generation is really good. So then, of course, when he had a child, it was his God-given duty to then pass that love on to me. So I grew up watching a lot of Next Generation, uh -huh. um, and it's a comfort show for me. It's it's a safe place. I know the rules of that reality, and I like how everyone's just, like, decent to each other, you know? People are nice. People care. Um, it's for greater good and, and advancement of people and societies, and it's just really comforting to me. Now, you are a younger person, so you, you saw Star Trek The Next Generation in reruns. Do you find that a lot of people that are your peers, do they also share Star Trek love? Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of people my age, so I'm 28, mm -hmm. and so when Next Generation ended, I was, what, three, four? Um, so I obviously didn't watch the original runs, and if I did, I was not conscious of them. <laughs> but there were a lot of TNG reruns on TV while yeah. I was growing up, you know, Sci-Fi Channel and just reruns all the time and my parents had you know vhs's of it so i find a lot of of friends my age who are also really into tng well now we've got two people at the same time that enjoy star trek and they happen to be married to one another it's the <laughs> dream you yeah living the dream uh everyone this is bob and emily dykes and they're from bonner springs kansas Emily and Bob, hello. Welcome to the show. <laughs> hello. Hello. So tell me a little bit about uh, how each of you got introduced and fell in love with Star Trek. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Well, I was I was indoctrinated as a little bitty baby because my parents would watch um, 
my parents would rock me to sleep watching Star Trek. That's how old I am. The original, <laughs> the original Star Trek. And um, so I just grew up. I just grew up with it. No, for me, it was, uh, I was a little bit older and um, I just started watching TV. And I used to watch Doctor Who and somebody turned me on and said, hey, you need to watch this Star Trek. It's really neat. Uh, so I had friends tell me, hey, watch this show. Mm -hmm. And it, it just took off from there. My very first one uh, I went to was in Wichita back in like 1990, I think. Uh, they had uh, Mark Leonard, uh, who was their celebrity speaking, who was Sark in the original series. He showed up and told a couple dirty Klingon jokes. I've, you know, I've ha actually had a number of uh, interactions with Star Trek uh, people, not through, not through conventions as much, as much as through um, my actual work, daytime work which is television. So I would meet them at um, industry events. And so I've, uh, I've had quite an interaction with uh, a lot of people on the show, like Whoopi Goldberg, William Shatner, Jonathan Frakes. I had a budget meeting and I walked up to the door of the TV station and all my staff was standing there with big stupid smiles on their faces. Like, and I was like, what, 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 what's happening? Follow us. So they took me by the hand and brought me into an office where sitting behind uh, the news director's desk was Jonathan Frakes, reading the Cincinnati Enquirer sports page, drinking coffee and eating a glazed donut. And I was almost speechless. I just went and looked at him and said, whoa, 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 whoa. what are you doing here? Um, so he was in town with his wife who was, uh, I think she still is, on an ABC uh, soap opera. So I got to hang with him for 90 minutes. So I, I learned a lot about him and talked about his future. And it was, it was a great time. I'll never forget it. That's way more concentrated time than most people get with someone like that. And the challenge is not to sound like a, a fanboy, Right. Uh, while you're stuck alone with him in an office. I found a, a booth that was a whole bunch of, you know, um, uh, homemade Xeroxed uh, copies of the sensual Vulcan. Okay, and they just have that right there at the convention? Oh yeah, and it was illustrated. Yeah, so I went to Planet Comic Con, I think it was 2014, Okay. and there were quite a few Star Trek TNG people there that year. Um, from what I remember, LeVar Burton, Marina Sirtis, Brent Spiner, and Michael Dorn were there on all on a panel, and mm -hmm. I saw that panel. I don't remember who else was at the convention because I didn't see anyone else, but I saw that panel. Did you it freak was awesome. out? It was great. So I had a huge crush. Oof. I had a huge crush on Lieutenant Commander Data growing up. Well, who did? <laughs> I I just really like he was endearing and charming, yeah. you know? He's cute. And so seeing Brent Spiner was really cool. And Brent Spiner and Michael Dorn are best friends. Friends. Oh, are they? So it was really cool to see them. And LeVar Burton's just such a lovely person. He's just so warm and, and just really kind. He's the best person. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's really great. He deserves every good thing that's ever happened to him. <laughs> nice. And so what were some impressions? What do you remember from that experience? Yeah, I remember how much it seemed like they were just everyone was just so close like family yeah, yeah um you know it was obvious that brent spiner and michael dorn had a really special connection but all four of them it was like getting siblings together or you know mm -hmm. favorite cousins um they just really loved being around each other they were super comfortable with each other they had a lot of fun inside jokes and stories it felt almost um voyeuristic <laughs> watching the <laughs> panel like i wasn't supposed to be in the room with them. <laughs> I can't imagine what it would be to be like in a work environment where you like all the people that much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see behind the scenes stuff and, and you hear them talk and, and they talk about it like it was the best experience of their life. And it, it seems like it was, even for all the the headaches that came with the early seasons of filming. They seemed to just really enjoy doing it. And during the convention, they would do, you know, different events. And one one that they did a, for a couple of years, which was actually really interesting, is I think the guy that John Lancey, is that his name? That yeah. plays Q, yeah. organized it. I think they wrote these short plays and they would they weren't star trek characters sometimes they were i think the one he did with leonard nimoy they were their star trek yeah. characters but uh they he would they would do these these like little dinner theater plays and you could buy an extra ticket to it and they they were really interesting 
Yeah, and so I, I like that. But I think the guy that played Q is the one that organized those. Yeah. My favorite, though, is always George Decay because he loves talking to people. I mean, like, he'll, <laughs> like, some of them, they're all very polite, but he just, like, really, like, oh, it's so nice to meet you. And he'll actually have a conversation with you with all these people, but, but he'll do it with every person, you know I mean? He's just mm -hmm. such a, he just loves the fans, and you can just tell. I don't think you can fake that. <laughs> A, a big part of every Star Trek convention is, is essentially a dealer room okay. where you go in and there's just stuff for sale and there's a whole bunch of people with booths that they're selling their Star Trek toys and uh, homemade things that they've built or, well, it used to be a lot more of that and now it's more, um, you know, like it used to be you couldn't order a tricorder mm -hmm. and you would have to go and find some guy who built them and, you know, he'd have a booth with several different models of tricorder set up that he'd made himself and that was always pretty cool. It was actually one of those booths that I was looking at one time because they had all the LED blinking lights and it opened and made the sounds. And um, <clears throat> I was fascinated by that and I stepped backwards and uh, 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 bumped into somebody and knocked them on the ground and turned around to realize that I'd knocked over um, uh, uh, Koenig. Crap. I can't remember. Walter Koenig? Yeah, Walter Koenig. Yeah, I, uh, the, I bumped the, into him. Check, check off. off. Yeah, check yeah. off. I knocked him on the ground. Oh, no. And uh, I, I apologized and tried to help him up, and he kind of brushed me off like that, and two other guys helped him up. Um, and then I was really embarrassed throughout the rest of the convention. <laughs> he was the speaker there, and uh, he got up and talked for about 30 minutes. Everybody came up and asked when Chekhov was going to get his own ship, and he just kept replying, you know, I'd really just like a bigger part in the show. And neither one of those things ever happened. Neither one of those ever happened. Yes. And so. uh, we, we met Armin Shimmer. Oh, yeah. Ah. Um, <laughs> I, we've met Armin Shimmerman, and he autographed this beautiful Ferengi head. Um, it's our prize, one of our prized possessions, lunchbox for us. Now, there's a story behind this. <laughs> it says Armin Shimmerman. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. But... He, he was at the convention where we bought this, and so we had him sign this. Yeah. And he was absolutely stunned to see <laughs> somebody like, what said. What is this? This is something. <laughs> and he was more than happy to sign it. He's like, I, I had no idea. They made this lunchbox. Yeah, like, yeah. That, that gave him a laugh, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah it takes a special was... kind of person to uh, to sign his own head, I think. <laughs> exactly. It does. And, and, you know, I'm just... We just love it. It's on display in our house. It's great. <laughs> Very accommodating, man. Very nice. Yeah. Makes me wonder yeah. how many people out there have a Ferengi head sitting on their shelves in their living room. <laughs> Good point. I don't know. We do. <laughs> I don't know. We just got one. Yeah. We've gotten some other fun things like... Um, I'm sure this is very stale by now, but Klingon Ractagino. Oh, you nice. Know, from Deep Space Nine, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's got Gowron, Gowron on it. <laughs> and uh, what else did we get? Oh, we got some oh. little things. Deanna Troy coffee mug. You I love Deanna Troy and them. the actress that plays her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, this little. I love seeing the memorabilia. Yeah, bring it on. You have a Gorn. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Were you ever tempted by any of the merchandise? Oh yeah! Oh my God, they got great merchandise. I got, I got, you know, like I got a little, little. I, I used to have a whole bunch more, but eBay um, gives me money to give that stuff to other people. So, so, what is it about the conventions that appeal to you? Oh my gosh, the stories alone are are just talking to other fans. <laughs> uh, just <That's> remarkable. <laughs> I, I mean. <laughs> So they had a security force that was actually dressed up as Klingons. They were bikers in the essence. <laughs> and I, I was in the bathroom once and two of these bike Klingons came into the bathroom. Now understand Pretty these guys were like six, boots. five, six, eight on their own, but they wore these platform boots and they both walked beside me and I'm looking up at them like they're seven feet tall. It's like, oh my God, who are these two people? <laughs> They were the actual security for the whole convention. Did they literally scare the pee out of you? <laughs> they scared the pee out of me. They were amazing. <laughs> but 
it was just the whole atmosphere and the fans uh -huh. were just contributing to the whole atmosphere it was great yeah it was just a great experience some of the best costumes i saw though were the borg the borg was absolutely insane the yeah great they had the gray skin and everything it was amazing very fright very scary actually it was yeah they were frightening yeah <laughs> yeah. I mean, for my money, that's the most terrifying villain that I've ever seen in my life. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of people, there, there were some people that had the, I mean, they must, they could have walked right off the movie set. It was, well, yes. they must have spent lots yeah. of money and the hours. Level, yeah, the level of work they put into those costumes is absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. I, I was astonished that they did all that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. If you want, um, you know, like old people Star Trek, young people Star Trek, um, they, they got a Star Trek for everybody. Two different cartoons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they got a comedy Star Trek, they got, uh, they got drama Trek, they got uh, ER Trek, and uh, 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 SVU Trek. And new ones coming out soon also. Oh yeah, yeah, everybody's going to have their own show. Chekhov may finally get his own show. So you're a fan of Next Generation. Mm -hmm. Do any of the other Star Treks appeal to you? Uh, kind of a purist. So I like yeah. the original series, but I recognize that it's kind of awful, like in, <laughs> in, in the wonderful way that it is. It has its moments. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. You know, it's kind of cheesy. Um, and the, the writing's a little ham-fisted every now and then. But it's great. It takes so many risks, especially mm -hmm. at a time when television wasn't taking those kind of risks right. yet. Um, and it was really groundbreaking and pioneering. Yeah, but I, we do watch Picard. Yes, for for the uh, we really like Picard, old school, and I'm I'm watching a little bit of Discovery, but she's not. I just couldn't get into Discovery either. It's okay, you know. I love the actress that um, she was also on Walking Dead, which right. we also yes like. I, well, Dead. you know, I think there's uh, there's a Star Trek now for almost everybody. It appeals to mm -hmm. different things in different people. Yep. So yeah. yeah, and he likes Lower Decks. I don't mind. I Lower Decks is okay. Yeah, um, it's funny. Uh, yeah, so there's there's quite a few, and then there's another one I have not seen, but I t I intend to to see it. But the the animated um, Voyager. Yeah, Prodigy has the uh, holographic. That's it. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I've, I've actually watched every episode of the Nickelodeon Star Trek Prodigy, which yeah. I think is kind of amazing. It's it's, it's great. Really good for a kids show. It's uh, my kids both love it. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's kind of my speed now. And you say that you're re-watching Next Generation right now. I am. I recently made it back to season four. Um, excited for season five. I think that's the mm. best season. Yeah, you, you made it past the awkwardness of that. Uh, that... See, I love it. <laughs> I, my favorite part is the third episode, the literal third episode yeah. of the entire series. Uh -huh. They just go completely bananas. And they're like, yeah, everybody smelled this drug and now everyone's horny. And also <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Data sleeps with people. Um, and he's fully functional. Uh, they do that episode three. And like they're like, yep. Yep, we're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna just put this out there right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's great. I I love the early awkward seasons. I also really love Tasha Yar. I think mm -hmm. she's a really cool character. Yeah. I'm sad that she got killed off so unceremoniously the mm -hmm. way she did, and I know it was contract disputes with the actress and she wanted out, but she was just such a cool character that I really related to, and I was always sad to see her go. So season one is special to me. I actually just read something about Tasha Yar's departure. I, I don't know if you remember this. So she was killed off in, in this, uh, on this planet by this black sludge alien. But that wasn't her last scene that right. she shot. Right, It was the, the, the scene where they, there were the drug smugglers, the people that were addicted to drugs. Mm -hmm. That was the last episode she shot. And apparently her last scene that she shot, she waved goodbye. And they oh. didn't edit it out. It's still oh. in the episode. I'll have to go back and watch that. Yeah, you can watch it. Because she does come back um, as a parallel version of herself a little later. That was, um, yes, that's great. That was a great move. They give her a, a much better send off that time. <laughs> she gets to like really say goodbye to the audience and the audience gets to say goodbye to her because mm -hmm. the original death is just so cheap. Mm -hmm. It's awful. <laughs> Boom done. Yeah, it's terrible. And they're just, she's gone. <laughs> You know, it's funny because we rewatched all the Star Treks and Deep Space Nine is great because it's just this big old space opera and it's awesome. But Voyager, I like Voyager even better the second time around. You know, I mean, I thought, it, I think that she, Kate Mulgrew did a great job and her captain was nuanced and she wasn't 
as it, it wasn't like this thing where she was well loved all the time she was willing to make decisions that just pissed everybody off and she's like oh well <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know and and i just i really she really fleshed out the I, I thought she yeah. she really she did a better job than than my beloved william shatner whom i love but <laughs> yeah <laughs> i really do like deep space nine though i watched it two or three times yeah, that's a good each one. time i did it was something new i got from it it, yeah. was, it was a really great show yeah. this show only works if we have people helping to support it there are a couple ways that you can help us do that number one become a member four dollars a month $24 for a six month period and that's all it takes for you to help keep this show going or if you have a business you can be an advertiser on this show send us a message and we'll show you how that works you will not be sorry our advertisers we treat them like royalty even better than royalty I have got for you being true Star Trek fans, a surprise 11 question trivia implosion about Star Trek. Oh boy. Oh no, <laughs> right oh no. I'm going to do so bad. Uh, it's possible because a lot of this is not the, uh, it's not the Star Trek that you are familiar with. So we'll see uh, how much you know. I'm going to make some educated guesses. Okay. <laughs> or maybe some uneducated guesses. <laughs> I am ready, buddy. Okay. Here's your first one. NBC rejected the pilot for Star Trek. What famous comedian got them to take another look? This is Comedians. good. This is good. If, if you don't know it, that will make some of our viewers feel better about themselves. Comedians who were doing stuff for NBC in the 60s. You can just roll off a list. Just, you know, bam, 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 right? <laughs> so many of them. Carson? Lucille Ball. Um, Lucille Ball. Oh, Lucille Ball. Uh, that would be uh, uh, Desi Lu Studio, uh, Lucille Ball. Yeah, sure enough. Lucille Ball, good job. Oh, I did know that. <laughs> I did know that. I've heard that story before that she, um, because she was um, doing her production company with Desi Arnaz, and they were yeah. like, no, you really need to take a look at this. She saved Star Trek. Yeah, because yeah. apparently her and Gene Roddenberry like, knew each other from something. I, I have heard that. Which Star Trek captain had an artificial heart? Uh, Jean-Luc Picard. Uh, that'd be Picard. Picard. Yeah. Picard, yeah. It is Picard, isn't it? It is yeah, Picard, yeah, yes. Because he gets surgery on it and he almost dies. Got taken out by a Nausicaan? Picard. Yeah, don't get in a bar fight with a Nausicaan. In which Star Trek series did we first see the cat-like alien race called the Kazinti? Boy, I'm, I honestly am at a loss, but I'll make an educated guess of uh, Enterprise. Oh, gosh. That sounds like some Deep Space Nine nonsense. Oh, uh, that would be the animated, the original Star Trek, the animated series. Yes, yes. good job. <laughs> that was also on, on my TV a lot when I was a kid. I watched it in the 70s in first run, um, but uh, I never actually got deep into it. I know a lot of stories about it. Like, for example, they tried to bring in uh, James Doohan to do a number of the voices of the characters, like Walter Koenig and Nimoy, found out about this and he said, uh, you know, if you want Spock, you got to hire the whole crew. So because of his pull, he got all the original um, series people to do their voices. Wow, the one I probably know the least about. Yeah, it's the one I everybody forget forgets about. I honestly <laughs> forget it exists. Yeah, the incidental music in that is always kind of running through the back of my head. There's like this, just it's always kind of there. Data had a cat. What was his cat's name? Spot. 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 It is Spot. Yes. Which Trek actor was shot six times on D-Day? Okay. Uh, Leonard Nimoy. I know he was in the military. Oh my gosh. I have to guess. DeForest Kelly? I'm going to lean towards DeForest Kelly. Doohan. Yes, that's right. Scotty. Oh, that'd be Scotty. That's uh, James Doohan. He's missing one of his fingers. If you if you watch closely in some of the original series, and, and that, uh, that Next Gen episode that he's in kind of has a, a, a moment where you can kind of see one of his missing fingers. Did you know he was shot by his own people? Uh, they they just, you know, there was so much confusion. It was night. Um, they heard a sound. 
behind him, guy whipped around with a Bren gun and just, you know, sprayed him down. And uh, there was something in his pocket from his brother that um, in his breast pocket that uh, a bullet hit and, uh, you know, just bruised him badly. Yeah, I didn't uh, see. I just learned something I didn't know. I didn't know that. Wow. Speaking of James Doohan, he was a man of many talents, and he even helped create which actual speakable language? Klingon? Was it Klingon? I, I, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm thinking Klingon, probably. Klingon. Is it Klingon? Uh, Klingon? Yeah. Yeah. He was, he was... yeah, I know Klingon has, uh, it's a conlang. It's a fully defined conlang. So it's got, it's got a pretty big vocabulary. You can take, you can do, learn it on Duolingo. You can. You can. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And Mark Oakrand, I think his name was, he's the one that actually fleshed it out into the full-on language. And now we see people getting married in Cleon and it's, it's, uh, it's taken on a life of its own. You know, there's Shakespeare in Cleon and people perform it. I may or may not have uh, Hamlet in Klingon uh, on my shelf right now. Which alien race did Ronald Reagan say reminded him of Congress? Oh, I didn't, this is one I don't know. Oh, got to be Vulcans. Probably the... <laughs> Who knows? Not the Vulcans, but the... Uh, the Romulans? The Romulans. Well, the only prominent races were the Cleons and the, the Romulans. I'm going to say Cleons. Is that also Klingon? Klingons is right, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know if Reagan had a really huge, uh, you know, encyclopedic memory of Star Trek aliens. So. I don't get the idea he was watching, but you know, who knows? <laughs> I'm always surprised at how many people actually watch the show and say they loved it. Okay, here's question eight for you. Sure. Which comedian had a role written for them in Star Trek IV that they ultimately turned down? I don't know. I'm just going to throw something out. Robin Williams. Why not? I'm drawing a blank. No. Nope. We don't know. I don't. Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. I was going to say that, but I was like, no, that's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. <laughs> he could have been. I, apparently, would... everybody knows this but me. I had no idea. No, can you imagine the direction that would have gone in? Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, he was going to be the uh, lady that Kirk fell in love with. Okay. That uh, worked at the aquarium. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You mean the, the one that was played by the, the, woman? the woman? Yep. Oh, my that gosh. That goes forward in time with the whale. Yeah. Oh, that would have been a different movie altogether. It sure yeah. would have. You're right. <laughs> and then and then he ended up in Pluto Nash. <laughs> Which Star Trek character was labeled unknown sample when discovered by scientists? I don't know. Worf? No, he's not <laughs> discovered by scientists. Data was discovered by scientists. But I think he was just called Data. Yes. Yeah, I have no clue. Data. Was it Data? No, I kind of... Oh, Odo. Um, oh. Odo. Yeah, yeah, Odo was the unknown sample. That was mm -hmm. nine. That's Odo. Oh, that's another uh, blind spot I have is Deep Space Nine. I, I I never deeply got into Deep Space, although it's on my to-do list. Odo. Oh, that's right. Bucket guy. That's right. I knew that. I knew, I, I knew I'd regret not knowing Deep Space Nine. Someday it'd come back and bite me on the butt, but... Oh well, this would be my motivation. Uh. Ah! This would be yeah. This is my motivation to get on it. What medical condition did William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy both suffer from as a result of standing too close to a special effect explosion? Uh, tinnitus. 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 Yeah. Tinnitus. Tinnitus. Exactly. Yes. And if you want to see how it happened, look at the episode "The Arena" in the first ten minutes. An explosion goes off right next to them, and you're like, oh, my God, that was really close. Uh, but that was it. And here's your last question. Which next generation actor was so convinced the show would fail, they never bothered to unpack their bags for over a month? Oh, that'd be Patrick Stewart. Yeah. Jean-Luc Picard himself. Patrick Stewart. <laughs> 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 they, 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 they thought yep. they were going to get canceled. Yep. Yeah, they totally <laughs> thought they were done. <laughs> Patrick Stewart. Yes, yeah, he thought exactly. he was on it. He was going to take the money and run. Thank goodness he was wrong. B Bob calls him my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> What's Patrick doing today? Patrick Stewart did not have a lot of hope for that show, but man, he acted his butt off anyway. Yes, he did. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Emily, he can't be your boyfriend because he's my boyfriend. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'll fight you. <laughs> 
he was not optimistic about his long-term viability. In fact, on his door, the name on his door, which Brent Spiner put up there on his dressing room door was uh, unknown British actor. Well, live long and prosper. Yay. <laughs> We'll be back tomorrow at 9 a.m. You're not going to want to miss this. We've got Emily Lyson from the Farmer's Market here in Lawrence talking about opening day, as well as a sneak peek at Lawrence High School's production of Lysistrata, a new version coming up this weekend. It's been a super fun first contact day. Thanks for spending it with us here at Northeast Kansas at Home. Please make sure you like this, share it with the Star Trek fan in your life, and subscribe to our channel so you can see the interesting people and businesses we bring you every weekday. Thanks so much. We will see you tomorrow.